Today we commemorate the feast of Saint John of the Cross, a Spanish spiritual master of the Carmelite tradition, a 16th century Carmelite friar, a brilliant poet and spiritual writer, a mystic whom the church in 1926 declared the mystical doctor of the church. His famous works, The Spiritual Canticle and The Dark Night of the Soul. Welcome to the Liturgy of the Word. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest, St. John, an outstanding dedication to the perfect self-denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate eternally your glory. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zephaniah. Trouble is coming to the rebellious, the defiled, the tyrannical city. She would never listen to the call, would never learn the lesson. She has never trusted in the Lord, never drawn near to her God. Yes, I will then give the peoples lips that are clean, so that all may invoke the name of the Lord and serve him under the same yoke. From beyond the banks of the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants will bring me offerings. When that day comes, you need feel no shame for all the misdeeds you have committed against me. For I will remove your proud boasters from your midst, and you will cease to strut on my holy mountain. In your midst, I will leave a humble and lowly people. And those who are left in Israel will seek refuge in the name of the Lord. They will do no wrong, will tell no lies, and the perjured tongue will no longer be found in their mouths. But they will be able to graze and rest with no one to disturb them. The Word of the Lord This poor man called, the Lord heard him. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. This poor man called, the Lord heard him. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him, and rescued him from all his distress. This poor man called, the Lord heard him. The Lord turns his face against the wicked, to destroy their remembrance from the earth. They call, and the Lord hears, and rescues them in all their distress. This poor man called, the Lord heard him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, those whose spirit is crushed he will save. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants, those who hide in him shall not be condemned. This poor man called, the Lord heard him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Look, the Lord will come to save his people. Blessed those who are ready to meet him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, what is your opinion? 
a man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not go. But afterwards, thought better of it and went. The man then went and said the same thing to the second who answered, Certainly, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first, they said. Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you, a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet, the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Even after seeing that, you refuse to think better of it and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, the parable of the Gospel today invites us, especially in the seasons of Advent, to enter into contemplative prayer on the mystery of the incarnation of Christ. The vineyard metaphorically represents the spiritual union with the divine Savior. The two sons in the parable represent all of us listening to make that unconditional response to his call for union and communion, especially at this Christmas. So what is your response? St. John of the Cross, in his famous teaching on prayer, especially contemplative prayer, challenges us to seek for union with God even in the darkest moment of our life. He shares how we can abide in pure presence of God, which path we can follow to bring clarity and peace to our souls, and how we can nurture a love that can transform even our most painful trials into an ascetic union with God. He calls this the dark night of the soul. The dark night, my friend, is a metaphor representing the dark situations in our life. For example, a moment of illness, grief, broken relationship, troubled mind or depression, failures in our life, loss and loneliness, dealing with death, and suffering of all kinds that we go through in life, especially spiritual dryness. Now, how do we find peace and comfort in prayer, especially in such moments? How do we find God in such darkness, where often prayer becomes dry and empty, driven by our feeling of abandonment. Sometimes we even question, where is God in such pain, in such deprivation? Does God really care? And sometimes we even question, does God really exist? St. John of the Cross shares from his own personal experience of such darkness in faith, in hope, in despair, and especially in prayer. He himself suffered such dark nights when he was in prison and deprived from everything, including spiritual nourishment. In those deprivation, where everything is turned to nothing, as St. John of the Cross would say in Spanish, Nada, 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 which means nothing, nothing, nothing. In that moment, the God of nothingness fills you with his intimate love. He says, when prayer becomes dry and empty, take it as a special grace from God to unlock a deeper union with him. In those darkest moments, if we persevere in our emptiness, still desiring to be with God, 
in that nothingness. Our prayer can transcend into a mystical union with God. St. John of the Cross shares in his spiritual canticle, Even though this dark night humble you and make you miserable, it is only to raise you up and exalt you. He concludes, Into this darkness of the soul, you begin to notice a subtle inflow of sweetness and ease. Finally empty, nada, 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 you are free to receive the Holy One of God. Such is the richness of the contemplative prayer shared by St. John of the Cross. So my brothers and sisters, as the Gospel of today invites us, let us respond to his call to spend time in such prayer, and especially contemplative prayer. Contemplating on the Word that becomes flesh for us, as He will come to us this Christmas in such ways. As He comes to you in your life, in your family, that the mystical union that God wants to share with you, the way St. John of the Cross has shared with us, even in difficult time, painful moment, that can become a grace-filled experience. Now let me conclude by reading to you in the writings of St. John of the Cross' famous work from the dark night of the soul. O soul, most beautiful among all creatures, you who so long to know the place where your beloved is, so as to seek him and become one with him, now it has been stated. You yourself are the home in which he dwells. Here is a reason to be happy. Here is a cause for joy. The realization that every blessing and all you hope for is so close to you as to be within you. Be glad. Find joy there. Gather together and present to him who dwells within you, since he is so close to you. Desire him there. Adore him there. And do not go off looking for him elsewhere. There is just one thing. Even though he is within you, he is hidden. St. John of the Cross in the Spiritual Canticle. So my brothers and sisters, let us pray in union with Christ, our Divine Saviour, in the words of his prayer, making it ours as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in St. John have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that, drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labour in the church, for the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace as we continue in our advanced preparation. God bless you. Amen. <music>